everybody and welcome back to the fish room. So my name's Lou and this here is our little fish room here at In The Back of Walker Fish UK. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a May uh, tour update. So some tanks I have just done water changes on, so a couple of them you can see they're a little bit popped up. Um, but I'm just going to take you around and show you all of the things that we have going on in the fish room at the moment. We're going to start off over here just because this um, nice little L255 spotted Medusa is out at the front here. Um, but note, these are the L255 uh, spotted Medusas. Um, there's another one up behind the, uh, the filter there. They've just got quite a cluttered uh, tank because they're quite shy. Um, and they're just a, a very straightforward, very nicely uh, spotted Medusa Pleco. These get quite large, um, around sort of 15 to 20 centimetres, so they're quite big. Um, these are maybe about three, four inches at the moment. Um, and yeah, there's about five of them in here, um, just waiting to go off to their new homes. Um, and next door, keeping up with the Medusa theme, we have um, some blue Medusas. Um, they are an LDA, I think it's LDA074 off the top of my head. Um, these only came in last week, so they are super, super shy. Um, normally there's one hanging out under here, but actually I don't know where it's gone. Um, and we also had a couple of little uh, variances, just beginnings mixed up in, uh, with these guys, which actually seeing them more than the, um, the Medusas. Oh, look, there's one um, just at the back there. So I've actually just um, put some massive old tablets around uh, for everybody today because I forgot uh, the other food. So everybody's just had a massive or a little bit of an injection of protein. It's not something I feed too much um, around the fish room. Um, next door are the uh, L333 um, black and whites. We've got three males left of these and one female. So at the moment it's a little bit like, oh, what's behind door number one? Let's meet bachelor number two. Um, and the one female is just sort of like hanging around and eating loads and really enjoying life. But no, we've got one wild male and a couple of other line bred males like this one here. Um, and yeah, just um, trying to get them going actually. I don't know why they haven't spawned yet, um, but maybe I have just got to give them a nice big water change or something while it's raining and see if I can um, spur them on a little bit. Um, and yeah, this tank hasn't quite settled down yet. I did just do quite a large water change on these guys, but these are our gorgeous little clown plecos in this tank. Um, so they're just a really, really nice sort of brown and gold striped little pleco. They really, really don't get too large. Um, so yeah, these are um, Panaculus CF Maccus in here. Really, really nice fish. Just a shame because I've kicked up so much much. Uh, I did really quite a big water change because they can be a little bit messy, these guys. Um, so yeah, maybe once I've come around, I'll be able to film another little bit of these uh, and you guys will be able to see them. So in the tank above these guys, I have what I affectionately refer to as the rapids tank. Now uh, we've got mostly phantoms in here. So we've got um, blue phantoms, green phantoms, and then there's a couple of rogue variants, there's just beginnies in here, um, and a couple of the more sort of dirty super reds. This used to be the tank with the big old pirate ship in it, but unfortunately one of the plecos got stuck in the pirate ship. Um, so they're not particularly happy with me at the moment, um, and I'm just sort of working out the scape in here because they're not particularly pleased with how I've done it, especially these phantoms. They're mostly just hanging around on this flower pot now. Um, so yeah, they're, they're just basically, I've just given them like a big old stack of rocks and things, but um, they just don't seem particularly interested, and yeah, there's, a, there's just a bunch of random placos in here that I'm trying to get out from um, other batches and things. Um, so a couple of these need moving, but yeah, this is just a very fast flowing tank, it's about 50-50 RO to um, tap water. Um, most of the tanks on this rack are mostly RO, um, I like to keep it quite soft over here. but. The, the Phantoms, they're really, really good fun. They're super, super active. Um, and yeah, just need to work out what I'm doing with this tank at the moment because it's just it's not too great to look at and the fish don't seem too happy either. So I'm uh, just going to see if I can work out some more clutter to put in the tanks to make them feel a little bit more comfortable. So next door to these guys, um, we have the Barry Ancestress Beginnies, Blue Black Panics. However, they don't want to know me right now. Oh, there's one just behind there. Um, and then yeah, for whatever reason this tank has an awful lot of like Daphne and scuds in it um, But what I've done is I've actually popped my little ancestress Rio Paraguay babies in here to grow out uh, for the meantime as well um, So let's see if I can find one uh, I think there's a little one down the side of that rock, but you can't really see it um, So yeah, no, we've just got the, um, the little uh, ancestress Rio Paraguay babies in here growing out for now 
Um, so they're about two centimeters now. Um, yeah, there you go. Like, there's a couple of them, just like tiny little miniature versions. Um, and yeah, so we've got the um, the blue black panax in here. They're still conditioning after arriving last week, but they are doing very nicely. Tank next door are uh, the Hype Ancestress Contradens, one of my favourites. This is a really nice and active group. Um, there's a nice male in this cave at the front here. Um, so yeah, these are very similar to the L201 Orinoco Angels and the L471 uh, Dwarf Snowballs as well. Well, but these guys are just high fences, just contradens. They do not have an L number, um, and they've got bigger spots. They've got sort of squintier eyes, um, and once they're sort of larger, they're quite spiky and knobbly looking um, compared to the other ones. But they're very, very active. You will probably see these guys an awful lot more than um, some of your other spotted high ancestral species. That's for sure. Up top here because uh, these three tanks are actually going to be for plants. Woo, I've got like Halloween lighting going on here with the um, the lights underneath my face. Um, but no, these three tanks up here they're a little bit small for fish and they're they're up tall as well. So I have to stand on a chair to get up, up in these tanks. So my idea was I'm actually going to do plants in here um, for our customers to be able to buy. So I was thinking sort of low uh, foreground, midground, background plants. Um, so I've just whacked some serious lights up there and completely drained them out to make sure there's no snails or anything. And then hopefully in a couple of weeks we are going to have some plants up in these tanks uh, ready to go. Um, and then yep, the, uh, the tank next door, it's the only tank that's got any fish in it up here. Um, this is where the pirate ship ended up because in here are my Microtanopoma and Sorgii uh, colony. Um, they're very, very shy. I've popped them up here because they don't really like me very much and they're, they're not really as bothered by me up here. Um, but they're probably not going to come out on camera. Have a Google if you want to see what they look like. They're one of those fish that's absolutely incredible in person and like, oh, like there's one, there is one down at the bottom. They're one of those that's absolutely incredible and they are quite rare um, and not many people have them. Um, and especially when you've got the males displaying to each other, they have that amazing barred uh, red pattern on them um, but they're very very shy um, and they're not really a fish that you're going to see much unless it's from a distance but they're one of those that when you do it's worth the wait. Cool so on the rack next door to the uh, the main rack these guys are on 50-50 uh, tacked RO some of them are a little bit more RO than others. Um, this is my L397 breeding tank so I've got two active males in here um, not currently on eggs one of them I swilled out the other day because he didn't want to let go of his last batch of fry. Um, not sure whether I'll be able to get any of the fry on camera, but I will just insert a little clip um, of when I swilled them out. Uh, I think we got about 17 in this um, first batch. The male on the right hasn't actually uh, had a clutch of eggs before, and I think the female hadn't either, so that wasn't too bad for their first lot. Um, but I tend to keep it quite grubby in here. We've just got some um, Russian lace guppies um, in here and just a bunch of snails. Um, but the, the babies um, do a lot better with a bit of mulm and a bit of poo from the parents and things. So just a little bit chaotic in here, but that's what these guys like. Um, and I mostly just top them off with a little bit of RO um, and take a couple of uh, jugs of water out every uh, week or so. And that's what uh, suits these guys just fine. So yeah, this is my sort of older of the two males. This is the one that I knew was breeding, um, but he has actually not had eggs with me yet, so that's interesting. Tank next door um, are some very shy fish. These are the L262 um, Stardust type ancestress, um, but they are quite shy. They're not really um, very big fans of uh, daylight. Um, I've noticed on my fish cameras, uh, which are just like baby monitors that I've got set up, um, on the night vision they are really really active and I was actually really shocked when I first set them out um, how many of these guys were out and about because um, with the infrared you can just see their eyes you can just see the, um, the little sparkly dots of their eyes 
Um, so yeah, no, I was really impressed actually how many of these uh, were coming out. But if I can get one on camera, uh, if I can, they're basically these really, really fine spotted, beautiful, be beautiful, beautiful fish. They're absolutely phenomenal. Um, they're so pretty. They look like they're covered in glitter. Um, but they're just a little bit shy. Sometimes there's a, a quite dominant male that um, lives in this cave here. Um, sometimes he'll come out and be quite bold during feeding times. Um, but no, they're, they're just quite a shy species. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and they're just hanging out in here. And then, yeah, we've got a couple of um, Gwenthory Hellerai sword tails, which I was working on for a project. Um, they all ended up being males, but I have two little baby females growing out in uh, another tank over here. So hopefully um, I will be able to put them together because, I mean, this male is absolutely stunning. So yeah, these are a wild type of sword tail, Gwenthory Hellerai. We've got that amazing spotted pattern on them. Um, he's not the nicest male I've got, but um, he's a pretty nice one, actually. So I do like my sword tails, especially the wild ones. So in the uh, tanks below on this rack, we have the L173B uh, false zebras in this tank. Um, so these were originally over on the other rack, but I've actually moved them into a slightly larger tank just to grow out. Um, and these are an absolutely phenomenally patterned fish. There's some really, really nice ones in here actually that I really, really like and they're actually just getting better as they grow up. Um, but they're uh, just a little false zebra pleco, hype ancestral species. Um, another one of those that sort of comes under the, um, the black and white um, hype ancestral with the, the squiggly patterns going on. Really, really pretty. Um, and then in the tank next door we have the uh, false zebra plecos, the um, not false zebra placos, sorry, um, I call them bandit placos or uh, yellowhead um, zebra placos. So these are L199s and yeah, I've just done a big water change on these guys. They are in with some shrimp. I was hoping that this guy was going to back up a little bit and show us him. Um, but they're absolutely stunning, really dark contrasted black and white stripes um, on these guys. Um, really, really pretty patterns, um, but they're just a little bit shy yet. They um, they were another one that came from our delivery the other day. Um, so check out the, the video um, from our Columbia delivery if you want to see these guys a little bit up, uh, more up close. And then, yeah, hopefully um, in future tours, um, I will be able to show you... Oh, there's one. Um, I will be able to show you these guys a little bit closer um, than just these little uh, blurry black and white things at the back of the tank um, in here. But these guys just live with some shrimp. Um, and it's just sort of like rocks and wood, very quite easy to please really. Um, and yeah, just um, got to tame them up a little bit because they've only just come from the wild. So I do apologise that you weren't able to see these guys very clearly. Um, but hopefully uh, in the future I'll be able to share them with you because they are absolutely divine. So in the tanks below those, to finish off this rack, we have my um, little bit of a weird tank, this one, because um, it's a little bit too warm for the Aspidurus remundis. Um, and it's maybe a little bit too cold for some of the other plecos. Uh, basically depends on the day, um, how the weather is. But the Aspidurus are maybe just a little bit too warm, so I might be moving these guys. However, I do have a breeding colony of them, and they are actually doing really, really well. Um, so a few of these I have bred, and a few of them are the original wild adults. So these guys are from maybe the second batch, um, and then there's actually a couple here. Um, the one on the right there was actually from the first batch. Um, and then if you watch very, very closely, there are some even smaller ones coming out, uh, which are from the most recent batches that these guys have been having. So just to breed these guys, I've just been doing water changes with soft water. Um, I've got some breeding mops and um, piles of moss. They are we're in with my uh, personal butterfly plecos, which I'm just growing out here. And then we've also got these absolutely divine long finned snow white uh, pleco babies growing out in here. So these arrived this last week um, and they're just a little bit of a project. I've got 30 of these, um, 31 of them actually, and they're really, really nice long finned snow white bristle noses. They're really, really tiny babies at the moment. Um, might be a couple of short fins mixed in with them. But they are absolutely divine, they are doing really, really well. Um, they travelled really, really well from the breeder. Um, and yeah, there's a couple of really quite special ones in here. Um, so these guys are just going to stay in with the Aspidurus because this is a really, really bioactive tank. Um, obviously, as we've got all of these Aspidurus fry um, thriving, I mean, there's loads of them now. Um, I'm so pleased that I've got a colony of these going, actually. Um, but no, because 
you know, these little guys, they're absolutely thriving. They're really, really um, strong, healthy fry. Um, we've just um, popped the fry in here because I just know that they're going to get enough to eat. Um, and then, yeah, the plan is to start separating them out into groups of five into different tanks so that having all 30 together, they're probably not going to grow as big or as fast. Um, so, yeah, once um, once they've been here for a couple of weeks, once they've maybe gained another centimetre or so, um, I'm just going to pop them into some other tanks. But I am so, so pleased with these Aspidurus raymundis. These are just amazing. Um, they're a species that I really, really liked. Um, and, yeah, the, the wild group that we started with, um, I had them for a while before they started breeding. But now that we've got colony going, it's, um, it's just really, really nice. And tent next door, just another one that had a really, really big water change. These are the butterfly placos that I imported to sell. Um, I had a bit of a journey with these because they came in really, really skinny. So um, they have uh, had a bit of a journey. Some of them had like a bit of a weird bacterial thing on their face. But they are nearly ready to go now. Um, they just, they're not going to come out on camera. But they're basically these. They're basically exactly the same as that, um, but they're bigger. They're about twice the size. Um, but they're all in that stack of wood down the back there. Um, and yeah, I just did a bit of water change on them. Um, just to freshen it up in here a little bit. So I've kicked up a, little, a bunch of muck. Um, and I've popped a little bit of extra sand in as well, actually, because we were a bit low. So hopefully in another video, once again, I will be able to share these with you. But we do have some really nice uh, Japan blue endlers in here. Um, which are starting to breed out some really, really nice ones. I'm mostly focusing on um, just getting really, really nice blues on them. I think that male I might need to take out, but no, especially that one with the, um, the nice dorsal. It's doing very well. And what I like about these is the females do have a little bit of a splash of blue on them as well. Alrighty then, so next up I call this one the, uh, the orange tank. Um, I was never actually very happy with what this looked like, so I switched it to black sand recently. Um, as you can see, just where it is with the reflections and things, it's not really in a great place um, in the fish room. But this has um, some gorgeous orange Venezuelan quarries in here, really, really big group of these. There are, um, they were originally uh, albino koi kahaku guppies, but they've actually started chugging out these um, other interesting looking ones in here as well. So there are um, quite a few males in here that probably need culling out, um, but I'm kind of just leaving them to it because I've got the nicest of kahakus in another group. Um, we've got some super reds in here, not 100% sure whether these are sort of the more clean ones or not. I think a couple of these were a different batch um, that came in from Czech Republic and were really, really tiny. But no, mostly just orange Venezuelan quarries in here. And then we've also got um, Ancestrous uh, Green Spot, can't remember the L number off the top of my head, um, but they are Ancestrous Rio Momons and there's a couple of Rio Paraguays in here as well, but not that many. Um, but this is mostly just um, an orange guppy, orange uh, Venezuelan curry tank. And these are one of my favourites. I really, really like the orange Venezuelans. There's not many curries where you can get, you know, big bold green and orange on them at the same time. So in the uh, tanks above these guys, I've got the L201 Orinoco Angel Snowballs absolutely divine so I've got a really really nice group of wild ones in here came in a couple of weeks ago I haven't had them too long so they do have a little bit of weight to gain um, and there are a couple of uh, rogue little bristlenoses in these tanks as well just normal ones um, but no we've just got the Orinoco Angel Snowballs in here elsewhere ones next door still going with the uh, spotted hyper ancestress there is a, a random rear paraguay male there oh, a wild one um, but there are the Angelicus Placos in this tank and the tank next door as well. Absolutely gorgeous. These are about as big as they're going to get. Um, there we go, you can see them a little bit better in the tank next door. Um, but no, so we've got some Angelicus Placos in this tank and the tank next door. So a really, really beautiful spotted type ancestral species. As you can see, they're a little bit different to the L262s because they're a little bit, um, you know, there's a lot more space in between the spots and they're more of a, like a black coloured body instead of like a greyish blue um, but no Angelicus are up there with some of my favourites of the Hyper Ancestress they've got really silly um, silly little attitudes with each other quite sort of bolshy and then yeah the tanks above these uh, it's another little set of these little um, funny cube shaped tanks um, so this is the tank that I spoke about in uh, one of my other videos um, with the Columbia arrival. So these are my Pinocchio whiptail catfish um, breeding colony. 
The mill is on eggs uh, down the back somewhere. Um, and yeah, these guys are just in with some shrimp at the moment. So it's just a very, very simple setup with lots of moss, um, some sand, deep sand beds, um, and just lots of sort of low cover. And these are absolutely gorgeous. Um, Pinocchio whiptails, Hermiodon titch, this Acupensa rhinus. And yeah, this group were um, breeding last year and then I accidentally sold um, my main male. So um, one of the babies from last year has now grown up and become the new male. Um, so all of these, I believe, are female, except maybe one of them. There might be another one here that has um, grown on. But no, all of these ladies are the original ladies um, out of the group that I had. And then, yeah, the male will sit on eggs for about a month, actually. Um, and then they'll hatch and he'll still hold on to them. So in here somewhere there is a male on eggs. Um, and yeah, so hopefully uh, in maybe a week or so I might start seeing little babies showing up in here. Um, and yeah, so these tanks up here are basically, uh, these two are baby tanks for me. Um, so I've got my Santa Maria Guppy colony in here, which is doing a lot better. We ended up down to two males. Um, so I had to do some pretty intensive um, separating of fry and things like that for a good couple of weeks just to get the number of males back up. Um, and now we are doing a lot better actually. I've got six or seven males in here. There's a couple that maybe need culling. Um, this female here, has just got a little bit of a deformed tail so maybe she needs to come out. Um, but I'm not really a guppy person. I've literally just got these because I find them really, really pretty. Um, and then when I've got loads of them, I will sell them off as pairs. But this tank is mostly for my lovely gold uh, bristle noses, which are getting quite a good size now. These were born uh, a couple of months ago, actually. Um, and yeah, so I need to actually probably move these out. These guys are probably going to be going into uh, one of the tanks with the super reds, um, just to grow out a little bit more until they are accessible, and then they will be ready to go off to their new homes. But as a general group of uh, fry, they are doing very, very well. The ones that were a little bit smaller that were in that other tank um, and weren't the ones that were in the bucket to start with um, are actually starting to catch up a little bit now. So there's actually one in the front here um, that would have been from that. Um, and then, yeah, that one on the left, you could say that was probably from the, the first batch um, that were in the bucket that got separated from the parents first. So this is just a super simple tank, just a couple of ornaments. A lot of these tanks are just ornaments that I have um, you know, it's not necessarily aesthetic or aquascape tanks, they're more functional than anything else. Um, but we've just got a breeding mop for the uh, for the guppies and some plastic plants and some terracotta pots in here. And that does them just fine. Tank next door, we have our gorgeous uh, L129 Colombian zebras that came in last week. These guys are doing really, really well. Super, super active, super, super friendly. Um, as far as these guys go, obviously they do like to be tucked down in nooks and crannies and things. But they are one of those, you'll see them a little bit more if they feel like they're safe. Um, but no, definitely, I did get a couple of really, really cool photos of like 10 of them all out at once. Um, but the longer that they spend with me, the more Colombians ever like they are being. Um, and it's just all um, stuck down into the little nooks and crannies because they do know they're small. These guys are maybe around four or five centimeters. Absolutely gorgeous, tiny little zebra placos. Colombian Zebraplagos. So this one here is a tank uh, right opposite the door, so the reflections are dreadful on this. Um, but we have the L66 King Tiger Placos in here. We've got some adults in here. I think it's one male, five females. It could be two males. Um, and we've also got the big group of panda curries that I've got in here um, and slate curries as well. And then there's uh, just a couple of different tetras in this tank. Um, but mostly in terms of the placos, this is the um, Hypancestrous King Tiger tank. Um, but no, we've got some ember tetras in here, we've got some slate curries. Another one I just did a water change on, so everybody's out and about. And yeah, as normal, just a couple of uh, little rogue bristle noses. And these ember tetras are stunning, I really, really like these. Wouldn't mind moving them into a different tank, but as you can see, it's a uh, high up and opposite the door and they've got loads and loads of hiding places over on the um, left hand side there so they can be a real pain to catch out of this tank. So we've got loads and loads of panda curries, loads and loads of slip curries in here. Tank below, another one I've just done a water change on, another one opposite the door, um, but this is our um, Congo puffer 
and fancy curry tank in here and these guys have actually been spawning not that you're gonna be able to see anybody um, so we've got CW028 Super Schwarzeye Curries in here as well as uh, Corridorus Super Pulchers and my group of uh, very old albino bronze curries. Um, the Super Pulchers are these like at the back over here. Um, and yeah, so the, just the female puffer actually comes out and says hello now. The male, I had to trim his teeth the other week. Um, he's fine, um, they had got quite long, but I have traumatized him so much, he stays behind there, and if he sees me, it's like flubber going ping, 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 all the way around the tank, um, and then he, he runs away, and she's there like, well, what's the big deal? Um, so, I was actually really astonished at how hard their teeth are, so I'm working really, really hard to make sure that these puffers, um, their teeth don't get too long, um, and yeah, the little female is fine, she's, um, super, super friendly. Luckily, he, his uh, nerves haven't rubbed off on her. But no, the male is, um, oh gosh, the reflections, my goodness. The male is down the back here. Um, he's normally down there behind that. Um, so yeah, we've just got some fancy gurus in here, um, which is some wild groups that I wouldn't mind breeding out um, because they are very, very expensive, these species. They're really, really pricey. Um, so as these are wilds, I would like to, if I can, um, separate them out into the pouches and the short size and maybe get them as breeding colonies and then the babies will obviously be quite a bit uh, more affordable than um, the wild adults that are imported. But I tell you what these super schwarz is, these are stunning. The main downside to these types of quarries is they like quite cold water so that's why they're over in these tanks over opposite the door because um, these guys don't really like it too much warmer more than about 25-26. So it's just a little bit of a shame because if they liked it warmer, I would actually have these guys in with my discus because I think that would look amazing. Um, but these guys, it's just a little bit too hot for them. So we're starting to finish up now. Um, this is the Astronautus Crassipinus tank. So I've got, uh, well, six of these left, but two or three of them are mine. Um, and then we've got a couple of oddball preds in here, like my reed fish. Um, there's a Senegal bircher, and then you can see there's an oscillated uh, bush fish growing out of the back. This oscillated bushfish should get about a foot. Um, really, really like bushfish, um, but no. Some of these are for a future planned African Congo biotope, um, which I would love to do in the future. But no, so these are Astronautus crassipinus, the little um, dwarf bumblebee Oscars, um, and they are doing really, really well. Obviously, check out our Brazil uh, delivery video if you want to see a little bit more about these guys. So you can see the white on the edges of their fins, which in Oscars, that means growth. And I promise I have fed them this morning. In fact, all of them a minute ago were all gasping because they'd um, got too much food in their gills. Um, and now they're all begging for food again. They're just so, so hungry all the time. Um, we've also got a couple of different uh, hypancistra species in here and also the polka dot placos, the L020s. Um, so yeah, just got a couple of um, different hypancistra species in here that I'm growing out. Um, and yeah, I don't know whether you'll be able to see her down the back there. Um, and then there's normally one in there as well, but we've also got the L020 um, polka dot plugos And these little bumblebee Oscars. I love growing out Oscars. They're so so sweet um, And yeah, just um, my little reed fish in here and a Senegal bircher And then the tank next door isn't really too inspiring at the moment It's um, just all of the really really clean super red um, bristle nose plugos in this tank so the cupid cichlids um, and the other cichlids that were in here have now moved on to their new homes. Oh, and there is a couple of little vampire placos in here that I pulled out my five foot um, just to see if they would maybe catch up with some of the others. But no, so just got really, really clean, super red um, bristle nose placos in here. There are a couple that are pulling out. Um, and yeah, no, some of the, the very best ones have actually separated into, into a different tank. Um, that incidentally doesn't have a light on it, but they're the ones I would like to grow out for myself. Um, but these are probably the cleanest super reds I have ever seen. Um, and yeah, so it's just a, a big old chunk of wood and some uh, gravel and sand in here at the moment and a big old filter, so not nothing too inspiring. Just enough to keep these guys happy um, and enough space for them to grow. And this is another of my personal tanks. So you may remember I picked up these diamond tetras from Pier Aquatics uh, the other month. They're growing out really, really nicely. You can see the males are absolutely divine, and this is why I wanted to get these. Um, so I do need to do a little bit of tidying up in this tank. Um, 
the placos have gone to town on some leaves that I put in here a little while ago. Um, but no, the, the diamond touches, as you can see, they're super, super friendly. Um, I really like them and they're really, really interactive as a Tetra species. I have already fed them. Um, and there's also a, a big old whiptail in here. There he is. Um, I can't remember what he is. He might be a Similima. Um, yeah, Similima whiptail, um, covered in sand. Um, but we've got a big male in here. There is also a pair of African butterfly cichlids that are also for the aforementioned um, future Congo biotope tank. Um, but they are in here at the moment where they can't cause too much damage because they are, um, that's the female. They are um, a little bit nippy actually. And I did just notice one of these touches has got a little bit of a gill curl on it. Um, which one was it? Sometimes you'll get a, a fish that's, there it is. Um, sometimes you'll get a fish that's had a little bit of a deformity on its gill or um, maybe water quality isn't as good. So I will just keep an eye on that. Um, obviously this is my discus tank. I have my pair of discus um, the red ones here, I don't know whether, where the white one's gone. Um, they don't really get on, to be honest. Um, but sometimes you'll just get a fish um, with a little bit of a gill curl, which is normally either water quality, parasites, or a genetic issue. Um, so I will just keep an eye on that. Might do uh, another water change on this tank tomorrow. Um, but no, I pop loads of oak leaves and catapa leaves in here, and there are two Medusa placos and two L. 102 hypensitious inspectors in here and literally within about three days they had reduced all of these leaves to just mulm and it looked really really pretty it looked amazing um and i was really really excited to have it really really black water um but they've just broken it all down into this mulm um so i need to sort all of this out but this is um the discus paludarium tank so we've got the waterfall um and the monstera and things haven't managed to kill the monstera yet amazingly enough um, and yeah it, it works pretty well obviously the waterfall um, the sponges and stuff are behind there so it's just a very simple pond pump um, definitely recommend checking out the video I did um, on this it's a bit of a haphazard scape um, but definitely recommend checking that out if you want to see how I did this um, for my discus it's just a shame um, that this tank is where it is with the reflections um, with the door and the Valex windows um, but it's a very, very natural tank. This is more my sort of style tank, where it's really, really sort of tanned and just sort of very natural looking, really. I wish my other discus would come out, but um, this is a, a box full of packing peanuts. This is like my little packing area here. Um, at the moment, until I rearrange these tanks, which I'll tell you about in a second, um, at the moment, this is taking up like two foot of this tank um, and you can't see anything that's going on over here. Um, but it's a nice tank. It needs a little bit of a work. Um, work up but I will uh, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with this there we go so to finish up uh, with my personal tanks in the fish room this is uh, my cichlid tank um, so it's a black water scape um, and it was originally all Central American cichlids however um, the giant gourami in the pond decided to turn feral um, so a lot of these fish had to come in here because he literally started killing everybody overnight and it was absolutely carnage. Um, so the giant gourami has now been rehomed and a lot of the large fish, including the bakortai and all of those types of fish, they have all now been rehomed, gone off to new homes. They are all gone now. So the pond has been drained. This tank has become a holding tank just for now um, for all these cichlids. Now these guys all used to live together, but when they were a lot smaller, so you have uh, my gorgeous female red tiger Mortal Gwent right in the middle there. Um, there's a bunch of vampire placos in here growing out. The two big white ones you can see chasing each other around, they're two brothers. They are Mascaharis Argenteus. Um, now that guy there, Charlie, the big one, he has always been the dominant one. They never do any harm, all they do is chase each other around because they're brothers. But it is one of those things where I am going to have to separate them um, in order for that um, subdominant fish to be able to get the best chance at life. Um, so might be selling him, might be moving him on, um, or I might just end up having um, him in with these guys. So the idea is we're going to separate the Oscars. So I've got the two super red ones and then just a normal red one, Titan. So we're going to separate the Oscars, the uh, Royal Akara and potentially the Jack Dempsey as well. 
Um, but basically all of the South American cichlids out of here with uh, more gentle dispositions are going to be either staying in here or going into a new pond. And then the centrals are going to be either moving into a new pond, a new tank, or um, a different setup altogether. So the idea is the only fish that are going to be staying in here is going to be the Oscars and um, the other South American cichlids in here, like my gorgeous um, Acara there. Um, and there's a couple of Crovia in here as well. Those guys will then join the Astronautes Crespinus when they've grown out. So I'm going to keep uh, a lot of the catfish in here. Um, so there's a lot of quite large catfish in here. There is um, the gorgeous L027 Zingu Panak um, in here, just working on conditioning her up. She's about eight inches. There's also a good size um, Asian sun catfish with a nasty attitude problem. Um, so I've had her quite well. She's about a foot. Um, so, and then we've also got um, my gorgeous big granulose catfish, which I think is one of the largest, the largest fish I own. Um, and the main reason he isn't in a pond is because, as you can see, all the way down his sides, he has these crazy serrated um, spikes. Um, and yeah, he literally just sits here and sleeps all day. He barely moves. I maybe see him take one or two breaths a minute. Um, but yeah, he's a big old fish. He's a couple of feet long. Um, and yeah, so it's just a lot of cichlids. These guys have obviously... They're getting on now because it's pretty cramped. This is not an ideal situation for these guys. Um, and yeah, so the plan is this tank is actually going to move. So now that I know what's happening with the pond um, and that the pond has been drained and is moving, we're going to be doing something a little bit different in here. So let's talk about that. So we have the five foot tank here, which um, is the one with too many fish in it. The idea is now, what I'm going to be doing is, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be moving this five foot tank over here, all right? So you might remember, um, just a big pile of mess up here at the moment, but um, you might remember that there used to be three cube tanks up on top of here. And I actually did an episode of me making all of this, but I've changed my mind. So there's enough space for me to get the five foot in this gap here, have enough space for a, a, a line of breeze blocks, and then enough space for a line of breeze blocks on the other side there. So it's basically going to be that tank. The 200 litre is going to come out and the 5 foot's going to go there. And then I'm going to build it up similar to how I have. So um, breeze blocks, breeze blocks, um, breeze blocks in the corner. We're going to get a nice thick piece of worked up to go all the way across. All right. So it's going to be the 5 foot underneath and that tank. Um, similar height to where the desk is now. We're then going to get... Uh, worked up to go all the way across. In this corner here, this is quite a hot corner because of the air pump. Um, I suspend them from the ceiling because um, they, they vibrate. But up here are the two Velux windows. These are the only natural light in the fish room. Um, so, and this up here is very hot. This um, corner over here gets really, really warm. So, above that worktop, um, on the worktop, above the five foot, I am going to move the discus tank. All right, so all of this stuff here is going to be directly underneath those Velux windows, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to expand on that. So that is probably one of the main reasons why this tank's looking a little bit sad at the moment, is because I know I'm going to move it. So the five foot is going to be there, the discus tank is going to be above that, and then this 200 litre is going to be next to it. All right, so we're going to have a big wall of sort of the biggest tanks in the fish room in here. That is then going to leave me with all of this space here. This is going to leave me with absolutely oodles of space in the middle. So whether I'm going to get another big old tank in here or whether I'm actually going to be building something like a large pond with some windows, I don't know. Maybe like an L-shaped pond for everybody. I don't know. But basically, this is going to free up a massive chunk of space in the middle of the fish room here um, I could do with a desk to do um, some packing because doing it on the tank lids isn't really an ideal situation um, but yeah that's basically the plan so at the moment I just need to actually get on and drain the tanks um, my lovely little helpers will help me shift them because I can't lift these ones on my own um, and yeah I just need to work out a nice piece of work top um, for these to go on or maybe some scaffolding um, timber or something good good strong bits of timber um but obviously this tank is oh gosh it's over 100 gallons so i mean it's gonna it weighs more than half a ton full 
um, and obviously I don't really want them on the floor either. So this, this one's going to be on the floor raised up by freeze blocks, like how the other ones are. And then the discus tank is a smaller tank, so it's a little bit lighter. Um, but it is going to have to be pretty strong because obviously I can't have a brace for that worktop in the middle of this tank. It's going to be five foot of worktop going all the way across with the supports either side. So having that, you know, another quarter of a ton, uh, quarter of a ton aquarium on top of that is going to be a bit of an ask. So I do need to make sure that it's something really, really strong. Um, probably something metal would probably be better than nothing. But um, no, I can get some uh, really big, strong bits of timber. So that is the plan. Yeah. So these are all of my um, personal tanks in the fish room at the moment. So just this one and that one um, and then obviously Steve as well um, and then hopefully once we've got things rejiggled I can start having a look at um, what I want to do with my personal tanks and my personal scapes because um, I'm going to have a bit more space so we can start separating all of the fish out um, into different aquariums and um, really start getting all of my personal fish nice and organised. Alrighty then, so that concludes uh, our May tour and um, hopefully I will be able to keep you guys updated on the tank, uh, tanks moving around and all of that kind of thing um, that's happening in the next week or so. It's going to be a lot of work um, but I think once that we've got these, um, these two tanks moved it's going to make a lot more space in here um, and then it's time to start thinking about more tanks, bigger tanks, all that kind of thing because we're always going to be improving it in the fish room here, always going to be tinkering with stuff. So stay tuned for another video and I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far. I was over the moon the other day um, when I logged on and saw that we'd, um, we'd surpassed 500 subscribers. It just kind of blows my mind a little bit because it's, um, it's like that's 500 people that would potentially stand in a room and listen to me talk for maybe about five minutes, um, five, ten minutes tops. Uh, I wouldn't listen to me any more than that really. Um, but. Um, about fish and that's really cool so I really really appreciate all of your support um, it is just me filming my uh, shenanigans here at, in the backdrop of the fish UK um, just as a little black eye specialist shop um, it's mostly just me and my family running it um, and obviously as you can see we are really really small uh, just like online trader um, and it's all just stuff that we get on with normally so I'm really really glad that everybody's been enjoying my shenanigans so far um, please do leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys what sort of fish you keep, um, what sort of things you're interested in, um, which one's your favourites out of all the fish that I've shown you today. That would be really, really cool. I'd love to hear from you guys, um, get a little bit of a two-way communication going instead of you guys just watching my face talking all the time. Um, but no, 500 subscribers, that's really, really cool because we have only been doing this maybe three months um, with the videos and yeah, as a business we've only been going a couple of years. We're still very, very new. Um, and obviously always still learning, always, always improving things as we go. So thank you so much for watching today. Big hello and a big shout out to everybody who has subscribed so far. So thank you so much for that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.